Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and welcome to the TeacherCast Podcast. Today, we have a very exciting show. Today, we're going to be talking all about robotics, and today, we are proud to help Dexter Industries launch a brand new robot called GoPyGo Go, and a brand new operating system called Dexter OS. We have a great panel tonight. We're going to be talking all about how GoPyGo Go is being used in the classrooms and how you can get started in your classrooms using robots. We have two amazing teachers as well as my first guest today. I want to bring on Taryn from Dexter Industries. Taryn, how are you today? Welcome to the TeacherCast podcast. Doing great. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much for being on here. Talk to us a little bit about GoPyGo Go and Dexter Industries. Yeah, so Dexter Industries is an educational robotics company. We build um, robot kits to help people um, learn how to program. And we have four main kits, but today we're mainly focusing on the GoPyGo, Go, which is a mobile robot. Looks like a little... A little robot car. And talk to us a little bit about these robots. When we're looking at it, we see two wheels. We see a bunch of circuits together. It, 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 it kind of manipulates on its own. What are some of the things that you're able to do with a GoPyGo? Go? Yeah, it's it's made, you know, has rubber wheels and little motors. And it. I think one of the great features is that it allows the students to actually build a robot themselves to start. Um, it has an acrylic body, and then inside are the circuit boards. So one is a Raspberry Pi, which is a small little um, credit card size computer, and another red board that sits on top of it that is our board. Um, and what you can do is connect all different types of sensors, cameras, um, things like buttons, buzzers, to be able to program the robot to do all kinds of things, navigate through a maze or... Um, you know, make it look like an animal and get it to react to light the way that animal would. So you can integrate lots of different subject matters while you're learning to program in a really fun way. The website is DexterIndustries.com. And many teachers out there are going, you know, robots are kind of intimidating. They're kind of scary. I don't know what to do. I'm not the STEM teacher. Can I bring in robots? We have a teacher here to tell us exactly how she got interested in learning robots. I want to bring on Lisa. Lisa, how are you today? Welcome to the podcast. Hi, how are you? Welcome to the show. Now, you have uh, been using the GoPi Goes in your classroom. Yes, and I kind of fell into it. It wasn't something that um, I was really interested in before or had a lot of expertise in to begin with. And, and talk to us a little bit about how you got your feet wet. Um, what was the first thing that you did in your classroom with the robots? Um, so I'm a sixth grade classroom teacher. So this I teach all of the subjects. Um, and so I got a robot um, just out of my own funds and sat down with lunch with my students and said, let's figure it out together. And we really worked through it um, as a group. And as far as your students, was this something that you had to give your students a lot of information on? Or is it really self-explanatory where you can give your sixth graders this, these parts and a little bit of focus and say, go have fun with this? Uh, they were really motivated um, to learn on their own and to discover on their own. If they ever ran into something that they weren't sure about, um, they'd jump right in trying to troubleshoot. Um, it really is a, mo a huge motivator. Now, I noticed that Taryn had said something about having a Raspberry Pi on, and we've talked a lot about Raspberry Pis in our in our other podcast. I want to bring on a Raspberry Pi expert. Uh, you know him for, as the author of the fantastic book, Programming in the Primary Grades. Uh, Dr. Sam Patterson, how are you today? Welcome to the program. I'm doing great. Glad to be here. Now, we're talking about robotics and building robots with your middle school classes today, but really, robots can be used anywhere, correct? Robots can be used anywhere, and believe it or not, you're actually talking about literacy and student empowerment. Because when you take a tool like the GoPi Go robot and you bring it into the classroom, you're actually bringing that whole DIY movement into your classroom, and you're helping your students understand how to learn from resources that other people have put together. And nine times out of 10, that involves reading. Now, Taryn, one of the things that we can do with the GoPyGos is not only use languages such as Scratch and Python, but talk to us a little bit about the integration that it has with Lego Mindstorms. Oh, so um, we one of our other robots is called the Burke Pie, and you can connect it um, to a Raspberry Pi and basically replace the brain of a Lego Mindstorm EV3 or NXT. So that would enable you to program all of your Lego Mindstorm sensors and motors 
um, to do more sophisticated things, be networked together, um, as well as programming all these other languages, Python, Java, C, um, as well as just simply in Scratch. And now, Taryn, talk to us a little bit about the big announcement that happened this year at the ISTE convention in San Antonio. So we just launched uh, the GoPygo 3, which is our newest version of the GoPygo. Um, it's a more versatile robot uh, that has a brand new operating system as well with a new language called Blockster, which is a drag and drop based off of Blockly by Google. Uh, very similar to Scratch, but much more intuitive and easier to work directly with the robot. So um, probably the, the best feature inside it is that it has built in free lessons um, to get you programming all of the different sensors that go with the robot. I love the fact that not only are the robots simple and easy to use, but that it does have a great curriculum that goes on it. Lisa, talk to us a little bit about how you've built out your curriculum uh, this past year with your students and some of the activities that you've been doing. Sure, we've tried to integrate it into a lot of different subject areas, whether it's um, through language arts, kind of like you were talking about it before, um, where first the students are just building the robots. It's, you know, it, functional formats. Can you read directions? Can you follow directions? Um, to fiction, where they're creating stories based on their code or creating code based on their stories. Um, we just try to integrate it as many subjects as possible. Now, with everything that's going on, what have your students really learned this year? I mean, it, it, it's not just about robots, isn't it? It's more self-explanatory or self-exploratory. It's more project-based. What do you really feel that your students have learned this year looking back over the last couple months? Um, they've really been able to be a little bit more self-directed um, and um, invested in their learning. Um, whether or not we're using the robots that day or not, they're trying to find ways to fit them in. Um, just the other day, we were working on Rube Goldberg projects and they're pulling the robots out because they want to do those as well. They didn't, they didn't just want to use the cardboard and all the other stuff we have in the room. They're trying to use all of the robots. Um, so that's what I've been really fascinated with is how they're integrating it, even if I'm not. So Sam, when we're looking at robots and bringing in different coding languages, we're looking at not just the stuff that you see in front of you, but we're really looking at what can we do outside of the box? What are some of those amazing projects that one might imagine students could do with a Go Pi Go, some Raspberry Pi, and some really cool directions from their teachers to let, allow them to use their imaginations. Well, the amazing thing about a simple robot like the Go Pi Go, I mean, it's complex, but at the same time, it's designed to be fairly simple to put together. And they worked out a lot of the technical snags that if you were doing this from scratch, you would have to spend a lot of time troubleshooting. They've got you know, everything working well together. So once you get that working, students can then remix those same ideas, you you know, into anything that spins a motor or uses a sensor. So just as uh, Lisa's kids were taking the robots into the Rube Goldberg machine, really what these kids are going to do with it is is beyond your imagination. And that's really important, right? You're giving these kids kind of building blocks for all of these simple automated machines that can be connected to things. They're just all coming together in the robot. And by the time you reach the end of the robot process, you know how the lights work, you know how to make the motors work, you know how to set directions, you know how to troubleshoot code, and you're ready to really begin to think more flexibly about how are we going to apply these motors? You know, what kind of movement can we get out of this? What else can we do with those sensors? So yeah, and actually that's why we decided to integrate a bunch of lessons so that you have the basics and can learn to program all of the different sensors. And for instance, my niece kind of built upon that and built a, a robot that could detect when her siblings were coming into her room, right? And built a little spy um, device for herself. And, you know, you just see the kids do everything from want to integrate it into space exploration projects like Lisa's students did to um, just creative fun projects. Now, if I was a teacher that was looking for some resources, is there a spot on DexterIndustries.com that I can go to learn more information? Yeah, it's great. We just launched Dexter Studio, actually, which is a project site where um, we have, we call them Dexperts, like Lisa, who are using these actively and putting up projects, as well as just community contributed projects as well. Um, so it's studio.dexterindustries.com. So, Taryn... One of the things that every teacher might be asking right now is where do we go to find these? We know we can go to DexterIndustries.com, but 
But really, when we're looking at this as being a school purchase, tell us a little bit about what's in the box, what can you get, and, and what are there any extras that we need in order to have a successful lesson with this? Yeah, so the robots come, as we mentioned, disassembled, so the students have the experience of building it. So um, one kit's about $200. You can get discounts if you buy multiples. We sell some classroom kits of five um, in a set. And what? Um, so you get the all the hardware that you would need to get started for that. Um, and then there are additional sensors that you can purchase um, and different packets of, of sensors, as well as curriculum. So we have some um, premium content that really takes you step by step through everything um, to help your students get started. Handbooks sort of for the teachers as well as for the students. Um, and you can you can get those in a variety of ways. But if you contact us, um, you know, our, our team will help you out and figure out the best solution for your needs. Um, and I also would love to mention that we have a free 45 day teacher trials where we actually will send you a kit to try out. Um, and all we ask is you pay for the shipping and uh, you get to try it out for 45 days and see if it works in your setting. And when we're looking at implementing this into our classrooms, does it matter the technology that we already have for Mac, window, Chromebook? What, what does, uh, what does a Dexpert need to have? The beauty of our new OS is that Dexter OS doesn't require anything but uh, a device that has Wi-Fi. Everything is ex accessed through a web browser, so you don't need to download anything, install anything. You don't need to work with the IT department. It's a closed network between the robot and your device, so it'll work on a Chromebook, PC, Mac, um, any kind of device that has a Wi-Fi connection. So let's talk a little bit about the beginning stages here. Um, you originally had one robot, am I correct in saying that? And then you went out for a grant and you picked up several more robots. Talk to us a little bit about what the difference it makes having one robot in an entire class versus having many. You know, And, and did you do two kids per one robot or three kids per one robot? How did all that work out? Um, so right, like you said, I, we started out with one robot and it was kind of just exploratory. Um, I had a group of kids who wanted to stay during lunch and uh, learn about it. Um, and then after the grant, um, I was able to get several more, but we still needed to work in groups. Um, so right now we usually work in groups of three to four, um, depending on the project and the content area. Um, and that works out really well. You're working on group skills, you're working on um, how to work with each other, how to compromise, um, but it helps out that you're not sharing one robot as the entire class. And, and what kind of tips and strategies do you have for teachers who are maybe working with robots for the first time? Um, just to be open and um, to allow the students to explore and not just get so stuck on um, what you've always done. Um, it's something that's made me open up more um, and really rethink my lessons. There's a lot of ways that you can integrate them um, authentically in an interesting way um, where I would never have thought to, to put you know, robots and social studies. And we're, we've done several lessons with social studies and robots. You know, I got to tell you, looking at Go Pi Go, it seems easy. I love the fact that they come completely disassembled. And, and, you know, your first project is to learn about them and put them together. Sam, I want to give you one of the last words here. As we as we look at this and as, as we look towards bringing in more robots into our classroom, what advice do you have for any teacher out there that's looking to learn about this stuff? I know you, maybe you could talk to us a little bit about Pi Academy or some of these other professional development venues. What is out there for teachers who are looking to learn more about this and want self-paced learning? Well, there's a number of good resources out there. The Raspberry Pi Foundation has an amazing website with great activities that are written to be kid accessible, but teachers can certainly do them and understand them. There's a lot of people working out there for great content, but really if you're a school and your goal is to get your kids doing robotics enabled passion projects, you want to be able to, you know, have a candy dispenser that uses facial recognition and this week's attendance chart or something like that, then you need to be doing something like these robot kits as a step one because they empower the kids to learn the stuff and they have enough support built into them that the teachers don't have to know everything. And I think my number one advice would be to start long before you feel like you know everything and plan lessons that have endings you haven't written. 
The website is DexterIndustries.com. You can, of course, find them on Twitter at DexterIND. Uh, I want to say thank you to all of my guests for coming on. Sam, let me start with you. Where can we get a hold of you, and uh, where do we find you on your social medias? You can find me and all of my things at MyPaperlessClassroom.com and BeyondTheHourOfCode.com. Excellent. And where can we get a hold of you, Lisa? Um, on Twitter at Roadrunners, R-O-D-E-R-U-N-N-E-R-S. Taryn, one more time, thank you so much for taking the time to come on and share with us Dexter Industries and the Go Pi Go. Talk to us a little bit about more about the 45-day trial for teachers and tell us about the special opportunities for anybody that wants to use TeacherCast as a reference when purchasing. Yeah, so you can learn more about our teacher trial and our products at DexterIndustries.com backslash DexterEd. You can email us at DexterEd at DexterIndustries.com. Um, and at checkout on our website, if you enter in TeacherCast as a coupon code, you can get 10% off. And one more time, thank you guys out there so much for spending time with us here on the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. There's, of course, several great ways that you can reach out and be a part of this and all of our shows. We love it when you find us on Twitter at TeacherCast. Email us at feedback at TeacherCast.net. Leave us a voice message over at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. And, of course, subscribe to all of our shows on audio and video over at TeacherCast.net slash iTunes and TeacherCast.net slash YouTube. On behalf of everybody here on the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.